Okay, so I'm going to be talking about um, a sort of story almost about um, sort of gra grassroots activity, and there's a lot that goes on uh, that sort of complements the VLE, and it ha I'm sure it happens in all in, in all institutions. Um, and one particular thing at, uh, within the art sector is, is very media rich, so there's a, there's a lot of uh, rich media uh, use. Uh, so what we find is that the VLEs are not sufficient. The hand, handling um, um, our needs really. So, uh, what happens is uh, basically everyone just creates their own thing, which is great. Um, and a lot of those things disappear when the, when the member of staff leaves. Um, so, <coughs> I embarked on a project, uh, that's clearly the wrong date, sorry about that, um, called Process Arts um, to try and address that, that problem. Um, and this was basically to try and basically bring all, everyone together in one space so we're not reliant on one person uh, to keep that space go to, to keep that space going. So a sort of community, um, open, um, sharing platform um, for UAL as it started. It's since later become a sector-wide uh, space. Okay, so in the, from 2008 up until today, it's been um, totally unsupported by the university as such. It's not, a, it's not an institutional resource. Uh, so these are the kind of things that, that sort of make up process arts. Um, so it's about sharing resources, knowledge, and creating OERs. Um, so there's Creative Commons licensing <coughs> on there as well. Um, it's not course aligned, and that's quite important because we're not trying to replicate the VLE. Um, when this started to be developed. Um, and it's, again, it's sort of out of that commercial space, so, and I think that was a problem also with a lot of people opting to go into the commercial space, going into YouTube as, as, a, as the main space. And what, ha what, what does that mean <coughs> when you put all your resources out into the commercial world? Um, uh, agile development, again, because it wasn't really constrained by the university, it could be quite free and it could uh, break the chains a little bit and, and really push the boundaries. Um, and it's open to everyone, and that was quite, quite significant, to actually open the floodgates beyond the university, uh, knock down the ward garden, and invite people into the sort of online space of the university. So we've got this straddling of this formal space and this informal space. And experimental, which is which is really important part of one of the characteristics of the space, uh, and also it's quite unknown because because the, the, there's not a lot of spaces like this within education. So in that way, it's 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 developing its own language or its own way of of, of working, and it's introducing obviously the informal learning aspects. So um, it's you know for a, for a site that, that that's not um, managed as such by a university, it was receiving quite, quite, quite a lot of users. You know, we've got 400 logged in users. No one's managing those users. Uh, no one's responsible for those users. And uh, quite a few thousand hits as well. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so it's going on the presumption that content is also not king. Um, and what is king is building those communities and getting people to talk to each other. We've got six colleges and no one really talked to each other. Um, and that was about also um, creating these, um, and th this became what part of the most um, popular aspect of the site was to develop communities for people to develop, um, to talk to each other across colleges, across subjects, and, um, and beyond. <coughs> So some of those aspects um, that are involved in, in nurturing those communities are listed here. And, and this, sort of, this idea of the digital citizen, um, I think, is quite new to, within our university, is you know, having a responsibility online and having a, a profile online, having an identity online. I think that these are all things we're, we're grappling with at the moment. We made The Guardian a couple of days ago with uh, 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 the way UAL are addressing online identities, especially for their students. Uh, so guidance, again, we've heard it in, in a, few, uh, a few of the presentations here. 
about that it's important that people are there to guide. People are there to, to, to hold hands um, with people that are unfamiliar with these environments. Um, and creating these new global networks as well. Uh, mentors, I won't go over it for everything, but stewardship, you kind of get the point. Um, and this is just to reinforce the fact that, that we, from a survey we did from the Digital Literacy Programme, that we're also running at UAL, um, that actually we, there is a lot of our staff going out uh, onto um, these commercial third-party um, platforms. And obviously the big problems with that is what happens when they, really, when they change, the, change the ball game and you put all your eggs in that basket. <coughs> So this is why it's important to me is to create this, this space that's not commercially dependent, not institutionally dependent, but somewhere in the middle. Where are those spaces? Where are those, those in-between spaces? And it's sort of made up of these three factors, really, and this is how Process Arts came about, was this organic, uh, grassroots, you know, this thing that just gets it going. Um, uh, Combined with the, the commercial side, you know, we use YouTube. Some of the videos have gone on there, 100,000 hits. You know, so, so we deposit stuff out into the world as well uh, through the commercial channels. We're also reliant on these, this sort of artificial OER, sort of JISC style funding that, that, you know, is really beneficial because it kicks projects, gets projects going, um, but it's obviously money that's, that's pushed in to achieve a certain task. Many of you might uh, <coughs> recognise this image from the um, Oxford uh, OER um, impact study. I've just reworked it a little bit um, because this is going into the transitional phase now of process arts <coughs> after four years of surviving. It's now been taken on by the university as a, an official resource. Now, what does this mean? Uh, taking this, this sort of grassroots uh, space and putting it into an actual service, what does it mean? And these are the kind of things we're grappling with at the moment. Um, and at the top of the iceberg is, is the visible stuff, and this is where all this cultural change is going on. This is where we're, um, <coughs> we're, we're sort of online, visibly, talking to each other and helping each other uh, in this space, and that's where that stewarding is going on. That's all visible. The stuff that's still under the waterline um, is the policy stuff, and I'm having meetings now with the senior chancellor and things like that about IPR and about how active uh, spaces like Process Arts can, inf can inform by presenting stories of activity. And the infrastructure. Um, you know, uh, what, what, how do these spaces... How are they going to keep developing? So this is our project plan, which I'll uh, quickly um, just kind of scan through. So the university is taking it on. Who's going to do it? You know, because no, no one's paid to do this site. So, so in a way, we're in this sort of dilemma at the moment of, you know, I'm trying to inform them as much as I can. Um, you know, because every, every, pretty much most of my work on process arts has been voluntary. So, um, again, we're looking at this, trying to get everyone involved in it. So we've built a bugs list for people to contribute and uh, to contribute to features and uh, sort of could contribute to the process, really, of taking process arts forward. Um, so these are the steps we're going through. So we're going to um, obviously have a look at the code. And this is great because it's a development that we've never had. We've never had this amount of money, and this is part of the benefit. Um, and we can upgrade to Drupal 7, which is fantastic. Um, we can start to implement uh, training and support for the site. So these are all the, the really good benefits. And we can start to integrate with the wider uh, VLE system, which I'll move on into a bit. Okay, this is where I went on holiday last week or so. When I went on holiday, it really dawned to me that I'm going away for a week. I'm going to turn my phone off. And... It was okay because I had UAL now taking control of this space. So benefits is it's got long-term institutional support. I can go on holidays now without having to worry about process art. Uh, it's got a long-term future. It's stable. Um, the service will improve. Um, we can expand the development plan to go international, to go national, which we are already. Um, it's becoming accepted. Officially within the institution, 
um, and we're using it to address uh, some of these policy issues, IPR and the open agenda within the university. And it's a live case study. That's one of the other important things. So I touched on that. Uh, some of the challenges. Um, so, yeah, it's got this independent spirit. Will it get lost when it's taken on by the university? Will this sort of, this sort of energy, will it be squashed? I don't know. Um, um, but, you know, tr trying to keep in between the institutional and the, and the commercial. Um, it's slow, potentially, because you're, you're coming into the sort of bureaucratic systems of, of the university, so it's not going to have that instant agile development which it's had. Um, will it be able to keep that up? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, and growth beyond the university, will it be pulled back in a little bit because it's starting to go out of the university? Um, and maybe there's a danger of being too closely affiliated to, to UAL. So, um, yeah, so the primary challenge beyond all that is, is obviously just to get the site going <coughs> within the university and to build up the participation levels of the space. And this is something I've been looking at, is the steps into open education and practicing online. And this idea of the person that's totally unaware, which a majority are at UAL, most are aware, or some are aware, and other people that are the thousands of people just watching the space. The starters are the people looking for somewhere to live, which is again down to the Dave White, um, visitor residents that they're lodging in space, like places, if you like, uh, trying to find their perfect home to live, and then you've got your residents, one of my residents on process arts. Um, so th this is, again, maybe this tension between the voluntary participation, which a lot of that goes on, it, a lot of voluntary stuff goes on there, um, how are we going to see more compulsory participation? What does that mean? How will that change the dynamics of the space if courses start to use it as a VLE almost and start to introduce compulsory assessment? You have to go on process art to upload the, a video about your work. How is that going to change the dynamic of the space? These are the kind of things that I think we need to be thinking about. Um, just to finish off, this is the, the new VLE that UAL is just about to run out. <coughs> And Process Arts is fitted into that VLE as the social space uh, that, again, bridges does some of the stuff that Moodle doesn't do, for instance, the VLE doesn't do. Um, so we've got a blogging, uh, an e-portfolio, and, and this sort of open educational resource space, and a file store. Okay, so I've just got this last picture of an icebreaker, which is, again, going back to the Oxford Impact Study that... You know, we're just about to launch this vessel off that hopefully is going to break some icebergs and uh, <laughs> do some interesting things. So, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 this is the great thing, obviously, about going into the institution. That before development was done, um, I just had to try and raise money to, to, to do development parts of the project. And obviously, um, now we have a team there that that's that's working on this project plan to help push the site forward, and we'll do all those developments. But also, is is listening to. You know, like the issues because we are rich media, so they've got a lot of video content. And I think, you know, this is this was a site that you could upload con video direct. You didn't have to go to YouTube, and we never had a space like that at university. So maybe we could push that forward as a as a technical um, change as well in development. I think that that's that's part of the experiment, and I think um, at the moment, and in a way, that's what's missing from the project plan is that. Actually, a lot of the work is that soft stuff, is that, um, that uh, stewardship that I was talking about. And so, in a way, I, I'm, all, I'm doing that, and I've done that job ever since. And so, it's almost like a one-by-one one impact. <laughs> so, it's, um, obviously, it's known, and a lot of people... And we, we did surveys about how people use it, and they all said, you know, they like, you know it keeps them... lets them know what people are doing. Um, but I think it's uh, the actual active user, the person that's logged in, that maybe wants to upload some content and actually be a participant within that space, 
that's, a, that's almost a one-to-one -one, uh, job at the moment of when they come on. You say, do you know Creative Commons license? You send them an email, they, they don't. And, and then you get into this engage in, in this online uh, discussion with someone you don't know, but is within your institution. And that's the way it's going on. And that's the same for staff, because this is staff and students, this is anyone, basically. <coughs> so, and then also, uh, you know, we're dealing with alumni as well on here as well. So. Yeah, well, I think the, the previous system of Blackboard just didn't, didn't, do, the, didn't do what people wanted. And, you know, so yeah, yeah. So so um, yeah, and, and th that's 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 part of the, the you know process arts coming into the the VLE. And again, they're definitely what is a VLE. And uh, if you ask anyone at university, I, I asked a director, a course director, and he was, what is a VLE? You know. So we don't. First of all, we haven't defined the VLE, and that's what we're going to be doing. And going back to that, this. Here and this is the new definition of the VLE, which, like I say, is almost it's it's part of the VLE. Yeah. So the VLE is this wider ecosystem that in, that's got very much the, the delivering the courses, and then you've got all these, like you say, this, these sort of uh, the VLE plus uh, block. So you know you could you've got options to go for blogging, for e-portfolio, for OER, <coughs> and for uh, content communities. Which is basically what that's doing, and then we've just got the file store, which is again was a GIST funded project, which delivered, uh, which delivered the repository, the standard repository. And, and again, this is where these little bits of funding come quite handy, um, is that part of this project kind of kept this alive a little bit, and that's, that's how this has survived. It's survived from being linked, being in, in, uh, integrated. So yeah, I think this 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 hasn't been launched yet. This is uh, a, a year away from actually going going live. So the the whole ecosystem. All right, thank you very much. I think that's thank great. you. Thank you.